welcome to everybody to, to our AutoJet webinar on podcasts. Um, special welcome to Lee Rail. Uh, Lee's been involved with AutoJet for a long time as a mentee, as a mentor. And um, just thank you so much, Lee, for your, for your time this morning, for your commitment to AutoJet as an organization. And just, yeah, we're very grateful to to be able to listen to you this morning and for the time that you've put into it. Um, just a message, I think most people on this call know about Orchet, so I'm not going to, to go into that this morning. If there is anything um, that you'd like to chat to myself or Lisa about with regard to our networking or our training, please be in touch. And um, if anyone has questions for Lee while he's talking, to please just put in the chat box and we'll go through the questions at the end. So over to you, Lee. Thank you. Thanks, Brenna. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, just going to start off to say this is my first webinar. I've done lots of um, lots of podcasts, but I've never uh, done a webinar. So I guess this is kind of like a podcast, but with lots of people in it. Although I wish I could hear more from you, but we, we can um, do that via the chat. So again, if there are any questions, I'm really happy to answer anything. Um, if we could just start off, I just want to get a sense of how many people here are regular listeners to podcasts. If you could just put in the chat, um, just say yes, regular or not. Just I want to get an understanding of how much people know about podcasting and how much they don't. Um, but I'm going to, oh, wow, we've got, we've got, um, okay, a good mix. Great. Um, so we're here to talk about how podcasting can help your business. And I'm going to share my personal experience over the last few years of podcasting and what it's done for me and, and hopefully what it can do for you. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just jump straight in to, to my presentation. So my podcast is called SeedPod. And I'm going to start off just sharing my story and how I got to where I am today with my podcast. So I, I'm a graphic designer. I've been doing that for 20 years. And I've had this agency called Seed for the last 10 years. And Seed is uh, it's a creative agency that we, we do a whole bunch of different things uh, from branding to web development and design to um, animation uh, various mediums, uh, all creative. And the focus that we focus on in terms of our clients is people making a difference. That's really what we try to do is work with social entrepreneurs or social enterprises, nonprofits, people who are trying to make positive impact in the world. And um, I, I've, I've always loved conversation. So for as long as I can remember, I've really enjoyed like long, deep, meaningful conversations with people it energizes me um and i've been listening to podcasts for a long time and part of, when I, I had a team my, my business has shifted but when i had a team for a while we were talking about maybe we should start a podcast and i i, I never really it never really sunk in for me and it it kind of it was an idea that floated around for a while and then one day i was walking in Constantia Village waiting for the shops to open because they only opened at nine or something like that and they were all closed. And I was feeling really, there was a moment of frustration because as a creative person, I'm often waiting for other people. So I'm waiting for people to, for clients to give me content or approve a project or make payments or, so, so I was just feeling like really frustrated and I just had this moment of like, you know what, I'm going to start this podcast because it's given it it's it's something of mine that i can own i can own the content i can own the schedule i can there's no one who tells me what i can and can't do um and it's, it's something it's like a creative output that i can own um and, and and that's 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 the moment that it was birthed i went back to this my agency the studio and i said guys we're starting the podcast and we just started um and now two years later i've done over a hundred interviews I've released almost uh, today. I'll be releasing episode 95. I've met some incredible people and it honestly, I can say it's changed my life. 
Um, I've grown so much. I've learned so much. It feels like I've been to university actually, because one of the amazing things about podcasting is that I feel like I get to sit with someone who is really knowledgeable on a subject, knows way more than I do, and download kind of their nuggets of information for an hour, one to one, um, which is rare. And I, I walk away from every experience um, with wisdom and knowledge. And, and so I've grown along the way tremendously through the experience. Um, yeah, that's, that's, oh, and, and the exciting thing now is that I've just landed a contract to produce a podcast for someone in America. And it's a, it's a, it's an exciting, I can't tell you too much because we're still in the development phase, but it's, it's fits into the kind of work that I do in that it's, it's impactful, it's positive, it's meaningful. And it, the money's really good actually. Um, and it's, so it's, it, it's good, good financial security. Um, so these last two years of hard work are really starting to pay off now for me. So I just wanted to set a little bit of context uh, within the podcasting universe. These stats, unfortunately, are American because there aren't really any for South Africa because the, the podcasting scene here is still relatively small, which is a good thing if you are thinking of doing a podcast because that means there's lots of space. But globally, there are about 2 million podcast shows with about 30 million episodes. Um, half of them are listened at home. 22% are listened in the car. 80% of episodes are listened to where people listen to most of the episode, which is quite significant because a lot of them are shorter podcasts of 20 minutes. Some of them are hour, an hour. Some of them are two hours or more. Mine are generally an hour to an hour and a half. Um, and most people listen to the whole show, which is quite incredible because that means you've got their attention for a long period of time. Um, most podcast listeners are very active on social media. And in America, half of the homes are podcast fans. And, and this, these numbers are going up constantly, uh, globally and in South Africa. There's more and more people getting into the space. There's more and more podcasters coming out. There's more and more people listening to podcasts. So there's an opportunity here. And the beauty of it is that you're, you're in someone's ear for a long time. So th there's an opportunity for you. It's, it's very personal and it's very intimate in, in that way. And, um, and so there's a unique opportunity to, to communicate with people in, in the way that you choose to. So in my mind, the, the, the important thing to think about before you do anything, and I didn't have the luxury of doing this, I kind of just started and figured this out along the way, is why are you doing it? Um, there's a lot of reasons to do it. I think what, why a lot of people do it is, is to become what's known as a thought leader within your industry. And what that means is typically, I think a few years ago, the way to do that was through, through blogging and writing. Um, but podcasting offers an opportunity where, where you can deliver content that sets you up within your industry to your audience as someone who is really knowledgeable about a subject matter. And that in itself can bring you leads and um, potential work. Another, another reason to do a podcast, uh, the next two are kind of linked, is content creation and, and search engine optimization. Uh, if you've got a business that derives a lot, of, a lot of your income through your website or through your online presence, then content creation is something that you have to be doing. Whether you're selling products or services or your business inquiries mainly come from your website, you're having to write blog posts or create videos or do something which changes the content of, your, of all of your mediums constantly. And podcasting is an amazing way to, to do that as well. Um, the, other, the other reason, and that's, that's more where I fit into is, is to build a community and a community. Uh, there, there are a few reasons for creating community, but it's generally 
around it's it's more around action and 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 so I, it's even you even have to think about why you want to create a community what is that community for what are you wanting to achieve through that community uh, so for example myself i'm wanting to build a community where people create positive action in the world that's linked very much linked to my business and and what i do and the kind of projects that i get involved in so i'm i'm creating a network and a community of people who are all feeding into my purpose and my business purpose for for being and existing the other th amazing thing that podcast does which I, I don't think you realize until you actually start is that it opens doors when you approach someone uh, no matter what business you're in when you approach them trying to sell them something there's a immediately a, a, a resistance or a um, a hurdle that you have to jump over to really get them to hear you. But with a podcast, you're actually offering them something. You're saying, I will give you space. I will give you a platform. I will give you this exposure. Um, and I, for me, I don't ask anything in return from those people. So no one has ever said no to me, which is, which is quite amazing. And I'm starting to reach across the globe now and contacting people overseas with, with much larger, larger, larger audiences than I have. And they're all saying yes, because, uh, because of that, like you giving them something and it's hard for someone to turn that down. Whereas if you go try sell them, say, ah, oh, can I design your website for you? They're not like, unless they're really in the need of a website and they really like you for some reason, even though they've never heard of you, they're going to say no, chances are. So, and then once you have them, you've, you've got them for, in my case, for at least an hour, you've got this person who you sitting and having a, like a long, deep conversation with for an hour, it builds a connection. And I've, one, of the, one of the things I've got from that is I've got referral business. So people have, uh, because of the connection built through that conversation, people are going, oh, Lee knows about this. Let's, let's see if he can help. And, and so I've got work that way. Um, which has been like the most refreshing thing about, I think the things that I've got back from this podcast. The other thing is monetization. And uh, that's really hard. I will say that straight out front, um, especially in South Africa. If, if you're wanting to monetize your, your podcast, you're going to need like a big sponsor. So the, the, the guys that are, that are monetizing their podcasts are the likes of, Fred Road, who's sponsor, his podcast is sponsored by Discovery, and um, you're going to need a big corporate backer. Otherwise, monetizing your podcast is it, it's a long haul. Uh, I'm nowhere near monetizing my podcast. It's something I've played with here and there, but don't like the reality is it's a really long game if you want to monetize and get direct money from your podcast. And there are a couple of ways to do that. One way is through advertising, which I don't personally like because I like the freedom to be able to say whatever I want in my podcast. Um, and if you've got advertisers on that kind of starts getting um, eroded a bit, you, you, you start thinking about, should I say this? Can I say that? Can I say that about that person? If there's a sponsor on board, uh, the other model, which I really like, and I would uh, want to move towards in the future is a community run model. Uh, there's a platform called Patreon, which facilitates that really nicely. And it, essentially, if you've got an audience of people, a community of listeners, and they're getting value out of what you're offering, they pay a monthly fee, whether it's $2 or $5 or $10, the different, normally different tiers and different packages. And then you get, you give those people a little bit of extra, maybe it's an extra episode or some extra notes or ability to get involved and ask questions. Um, but that's the other monetization model. But I think there should be a business decision driving the reason why you're doing it. Um, I guess if you're doing it for a business reason, maybe you're doing it for a personal reason. Maybe you, it's a creative outlet. Maybe it's a way to explore new things and new ideas. Um, personally, I, it's helped. It's actually creating a career shift for me. That's how fundamentally this podcast has changed my life. Um, I'm, I'm going to, so, so the next piece is, and it's related to the, the first one is, who your audience is. 
I'm just going to jump out of the share because I feel like you guys are staring at a, at a screen, at a, at a slide the whole time. Um, so it's important to understand upfront who your audience is and why you're wanting to talk to them and what you're wanting to say to them. So, um, for example, if you're a, uh, I don't know, if you're a photographer and you want to create and you want to sell photography products you've got to want to create an online store and you want to sell products to photographers then you would create a community um you you create content that speaks to photographers and create a community of photographers but you can then sell something onto them whether it's courses or products um and and so that that who you're talking to is very much linked to why you're doing it um yeah, and it, it could just be for for education purposes. Maybe maybe you sell a product that that people don't know a lot about, and so this is an opportunity to explore in more depth what your product's about. Uh, have conversations with leading experts that can verify what you're saying about your product. So it's not just coming from you. That's I think the other point is is it's not just you talking all the time. You're not saying, this is me, this is my product. Hey, please buy something from me. Um, you're getting other people and other input and it, it just builds a much richer experience and people are, um, people are, are more inclined to listen and engage with you and, and your medium if it's not just you shouting, please buy my thing all the time. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to jump straight back into the presentation quickly. Um, oh, the, the other thing is what value you're providing to them. Because that's what, if, if you want someone to reg regularly listen to your podcast, you've got to provide them value. It can't just be uh, for the sake of, so it could be education, it could be inspiration, it could be um, ideas, it, 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 there's a lot of like intangible things that you could be giving people, but it's something just to think about. Um, and what do you want from them in return? Do you want to monetize? Do you want feedback? Do you want community? Do you want them to share it? If you do ask them, um, yeah. Uh, the, the next thing to think about is, and it's, it kind of feeds into the first two pieces is the format. So there are a few different formats out there. I do interview style. Uh, it's actually the easiest to do from a format, from an editing perspective, because I just sit down with someone and I press record and um, I like it quite rough and uh, natural. I'd, and and you have a, a conversation. Often it feels like I'm sitting down with someone, a friend having a coffee and um, there's a deep conversation that happens that has value. And then I, put like a piece in the beginning, a little bit of a summary and a piece at the end and some music and then it's done. Um, but th I think there's some skills which I'll talk about just now that make those interviews uh, more powerful, which, which you need to think about and uh, practice. The next kind of format is a curated one and those are coming out more and more. As the, the platform and the medium evolves, people are polishing much more. And so the curated one is your is, is you'd have a host, whether that's you or someone else. And even if that's the other thing is, if you've got a podcast, you don't have to be that person speaking. You can run a podcast for your business, but you can get someone else in who, maybe you don't want to be that speaker. I would encourage you to, but if, if it doesn't happen, then if you want to hire someone else to do it, that's also something that people do. So you, the curated format is, you'd have a, a host and then in, interwoven with the host speaking, you'd have multiple interviews and you'd have sound bites and you could have a piece that's drawn from the news and you could have a, a clip from YouTube and you, you build it with different segments and different pieces and it's highly edited. It's normally scripted. And um, before you even put it, like record anything, you know exactly what everyone's going to say. And it, it, it's like a, it's like cutting a film almost, but it, it's just in audio. So it's, it's a much more polished, curated version. Um, then you get monologues, which is what I'm doing right now, <laughs> um, where it's just some, maybe you're a professor and you've got a lot of information to, to depart 
and you just talk and you deliver your information and your knowledge and your expertise. There's value in that too. If you have the knowledge and you're a good speaker. Uh, the other one is more conversational or, or panel discussion where you have multiple people on at one time and you, and you discuss uh, things. I know Gareth Cliff does that. But his is very frivolous and um, silly a lot of the time, but he, uh, he has a panel of sometimes three or four or five people and they just talk about stuff, latest news and things and um, that, that. And, then, and then there's friction. So if you, maybe you're a writer, and, uh, whether it's part of your job or it's a passion of yours, you can create fictional stories and tell people fictional stories and showcase your creative thinking or your creative skills that way. Um, or produce a children's book series or children's story series. Those are quite getting quite popular as well. Um, and you could, you know, those fictional ones could be one person talking with sound effects, or you could get a whole team of people to different, do different voices and, it can get very elaborate and um, yeah, complex. And again, that would be much, there's a lot more production that goes into those. Um, the, the other thing that I'd encourage with this, because there's so many shows out there, is to carve yourself a niche. So, and that niche, if, if this, if you're doing this for, the purposes of your business that niche should be related to your business whether if you're a photographer then you do a photography podcast or if you do aromatherapy you do uh either natural health or um sorry someone's trying to phone me i just need to uh go into airplane mode um yeah so your niche should speak to your audience and the reason to do a niche not only because there's so much competition is because you also know who those people are, you know, where they are, you know, what other kinds of content are they consuming? What, what other kinds of websites do they visit? Uh, what products do they buy? Um, yeah. You, you, you're going to know their demographic, their psychographic a lot. You'll know a lot more about them if you niche and you, and you go, this is my content. This is who I'm focusing on. And I, highly highly recommend getting really narrow and really sharp with that focus you, you you've got a, a a much greater chance of success and i'd rather always say that either you it, it's probably better to have a thousand or even a hundred like really loyal fans who listen to every single podcast than ten thousand who listen to every hundredth podcast because they listen to so many um that loyal small loyal following is it can bring great rewards as well. You don't have to have this massive following to, to see results. Um, go back into the presentation. Uh, the, the, the other thing I'd like to say is, is to just start. There's so many reasons that, we, that one could come up with why not to do something like this. Uh, it is a time requirement. They, they, it does take up time. My podcast, I've been doing it for a while, so I've kind of streamlined things, but it takes about four to six hours a week. So I'm producing a weekly episode and it, it takes about four to six hours a week to get out. That includes recording, editing, and saving files out and, and posting onto social media. Um, so, so time could be an excuse Money could be an excuse, which it's not, which I'll go into just now in terms of tools and things out there, which, which are really inexpensive ways of getting, getting going. Um, confidence is probably the biggest one. Uh, I'm not good enough. I can't do it. I've never done anything like this before. It's all, it's, if, if you have the inclination, just do it. I think there's nothing to lose. You could always try five episodes, 10 episodes. If you really struggling and you're not doing it, maybe it's not for you, but rather try and fail than not try at all. Um, and then the last thing I'd like to say is that the biggest skill that I found that's useful for podcasting is the ability to listen, really listen. Like the shows that I um, get, 
that I enjoy the most are the ones where the host listens to their guest, doesn't interrupt, um, and gives the guest space. If you're doing an interview style, um, that is. Uh, what's in it for you? Uh, there, there are a lot of things that you could get out of the podcast. So as I said before, I've learned so much information chatting to various experts along the way um, where literally I'm changing career because I've learned so much and I, I feel a pull towards a, a, a new direction having had these conversations, made connections. I also have a network of people that are in this new space that I'm wanting to go into. Um, I've made really strong connections with people. There are quite a lot of people who I've interviewed who I have regular connection with now, becoming friends, I do, you know, I have coffees with them and discuss my ideas and share, you know, business thoughts and we help each other and send work each other. You know, I send them work, they send me work. Um, yeah. So, so it's, it's, there's, there's a lot to, to gain from, from the overall experience, even if your listenership is small and you're, you're not getting direct revenue from your podcast. And as I said earlier, no one says no. Almost no one says no. It's a great door opener um, because you're giving. And um, yeah, uh, you, I've met people that I'm collaborating with who, who I, I have huge regard for and would never before think, how, how would I collaborate with someone like that but if i once i've sat down with them and had a proper conversation with them there's a connection and um it's led to collaboration and friendships and and mentorship i've got a couple of people who i feel are are mentoring me in some ways helping me um because you that's the thing as well is because you're giving to people there's a i think it's a natural human trait is that when someone's given you something, you, you want to give back to them. And so I have this feeling where many of my guests freely want to help me with, with whatever that is, whether it's advice or whether it's on a project or um, refer me to someone else. People, it, it's, it's, I'm just finding people very open in, in, in the podcast because of the podcasting relationship and uh, journey people are open and sharing and, and they give to me because I've given them something without expecting anything in return. So don't expect it. It, it, it kind of, um, it just happens. Uh, and then I also say referrals. I've, I've got a lot of referral business because, because I, I've also established myself as a, or busy establishing a, myself as a thought leader within a certain sector um, People come to me and uh, give me work because they, they understand that I, my level of understanding within the topic. Um, yeah, the hard bits. So it, it's, it's been quite brutal at times. I, I won't lie. It's not plain sailing all the way. Uh, for anyone who's ever tried to write a blog, it's, it's similar in that consistency is key. If, you, if you're delivering content, whatever that is, to some, to an audience, and you create an expectation that you're going to give them something every week. You have to keep giving it to them every week, and keep plugging away, and keep going, um, even when sometimes it feels like there's nothing coming back. Sometimes I feel like I'm talking into a void, where I, I send this content out and I don't ever hear anything back. And then in a few months later, someone will say, ah, oh, listen to that podcast episode. It was amazing. Thank you so much. But off it, 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 those, those pieces um, are few and far, far between sometimes. And, and so it takes like a certain amount of resolve and um, perseverance to just keep going. Um, I'm also starting to tap into like networking with other podcasters, which also helps. So if, if it is something that you're thinking of doing, I'd highly recommend that too, is to connect with other podcasters. Again, I've, I've felt, because we're all in the same boat, I've felt that people share freely, are open to discussing things, open to sharing the way they do things, uh, tips and advice. And um, yeah, there's a real like community 
feeling to the podcasting um, community. Social media is something I've struggled with, is in, but that's because I don't, I don't love it. I don't love being on Facebook. It's it's uh, it's not something that feeds me. So I try and avoid it. And um, and so regular posting, which is really vital to to growing your audience, regular posting of social media is a must. Um, so that's something I've struggled with. And there are very various tools out there to help you. I've employed people here and there to help me as well. Um, but it's, it's been a just getting that content out every week. Often I'm doing it at night because that's when I have the time. And, and so it's, uh, yeah, it, again, it takes resolve. And then I have bad days, you know? So if I, uh, last week I went to a, an interview and uh, I, I'm doing this intermittent fasting thing and I've just started. And so I was, I was really in like a really bad mood. <laughs> and to have to sit there and hold space for someone it's difficult and it was a it was a bad interview and we both agreed that it was and we're going to have to re-record it because i just it, it wasn't like shockingly bad but it just was it was like okay it was average and um and that's going to happen particularly when you have to hold space for other people uh i find that my best podcasts are on days when i meditate before where I create space within myself in order to be able to, to kind of hold space for that conversation where I prepare properly. Um, yeah, you have to set yourself up for success and, and try and limit the, the bad days and the effects of the bad days. But we're all human and, and they're going to happen. Um, is it worth it? A hundred percent. As I said, I've changed so much. The way I think, the way I see the world, the information I have in my brain, the connections, the community. Um, I've grown as a person from this experience. And so that alone has made it worth it. I feel like what I often say to people is that I, I get paid on a soul level for, my, for doing the, the podcast rather than a monetary level, although I'm now getting paid on a monetary level as well. Um, I don't want to bore you guys too much. There's a lot of stuff online about the, the technical bits. That's the other thing is Google. If you don't know something, if you're wanting to start, there's so much information out there. There's so many different ways of doing things. Just Google it. But I'm going to quickly run through um, the different processes. The first process is recording your podcast. Uh, if you're doing it, if you're not doing it in person, which I prefer myself, if you, although during lockdown that hasn't been possible, but it, and now that I'm reaching overseas, I'm having to do them more online. The, you can do it via Zoom. The audio quality is not amazing, but it's the simplest. You don't need a microphone, neither does the other person. You can do a Zoom recording and then Zoom gives you both an audio and a video file, which you can then take into an, an, another editing package and edit that audio file, um, which we'll get to next. So that would be the simplest. You also get on your, on your mobile phone, you get a, an app called Anchor, uh, as in the thing a ship throws into the water, um, which does a similar thing, but through your mobile device. So you can record on your phone. Um, those are probably the lowest cost, simplest routes. Um, there's a, th th then you get a whole bunch of online recording tools. Um, Squadcast is one of them. Um, Zencast is another one of them. Uh, I just signed up to Zencaster recently because they have a, a free package, which allows you to um, record for free. You don't get all the, all the features, but it's enough to start with. Uh, and there again, if you don't have a, a microphone, it's fine. You can use your computer audio to do it. Then if you're wanting to, um, so, so the reason why I'm moving across to Zencast is because I'm wanting to create better quality audio than what Zoom offers. I do have my own personal um, recording setup, 
when I started out, I had nothing. I borrowed equipment from other people and I did it in the lounge at my studio, at my uh, design studio. And it was very informal and very kind of just thrown together. And then I got uh, a recording studio to kind of sponsor it for a while where they did the recordings for me for free. And then, you know, I think that after that was uh, maybe after eight, nine months, I did then eventually bought my own recording setup. And I'll run that through quickly with you. It's very, very simple. Um, it cost me about 5,000 Rand. The, the, the most advanced piece of machinery is, is this little thing here called a, a Scarlett 2i2. It's, a, it's called a media interface. Essentially what it does is it, does is it allows me to plug two microphones into this device and plug that into my computer and then press record into, I use Adobe Audition because I've got an Adobe license from, for what I do. But again, there are free tools out there. It doesn't have to cost you anything. Um, just Google free podcasting recording tool and you'll find there are a number of good quality ones. Um, and then I have two cables. They're called XLR cables that plug from my Scarlett into my microphones. Um, and then I've got two microphone stands with, this is called a, a pop filter. It, it, what it does is it, when you when you speak and you you make like purr sounds, if that's if this pop filter is not there, it, it makes like an explosive sound on the microphone, which doesn't sound great in in your ear. So it prevents that from happening. Um, and that's really that's my setup. So I've got two microphones. So I've got my media interface, two cables, and that plugs into my computer. It's very simple and easy to carry around. Um, and now with Zencaster is I plug one microphone in here so that at least my voice is coming through at a good quality because even though this is not an expensive mic, the quality is much higher than what my laptop can give me. Um, on the editing side, uh, the, 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 generally the free recording tools allow you to edit as well. I, I, edit, I record and edit in Audition. Um, I learned everything from YouTube. I did, when I started, I didn't know anything about uh, editing sound. Um, and I just learned it through YouTube. And it's an amazing resource. So I, I'd say that anyone can do it. It's, it's really not hard. Um, the other, the next piece is hosting. So the, the way it works is that you need to put your podcast up into the cloud on the internet somewhere. And then that, you plug that into iTunes and uh, Spotify and Stitcher and all the popular podcast platforms. You, you, it's called an RSS feed. Once you've got your hosting set up, you upload your podcasts onto your host. And then those, you take the URL and you just give it to Google, to, Google, to the Apple Play Store, to the, to the different um, distribution channels. And it all happens automatically. You just do it once the first time. Um, but and there, again, there are a lot of hosts out there. I use Buzzsprout. Um, at the time when I started, it gave me the best um, feature set for the price. Since then, a lot of new packages have come out. Uh, Simplecast is a really nice one. Um, their, their, their rates are good, and um, I've heard really good things about them. For me to change now, it's, it's really difficult. And I think the price difference is like $2 a month. So it's not something I'm going to do in a rush. Um, and I'm happy with what I've got. Uh, distribution is, the, is, the, is what I was talking about earlier about with the RSS feeds. But what I'm trying to do as well is to negotiate deals with other people to get them to take my podcast content and put it on their platform so more people are listening to my podcast. So I've recently negotiated a deal with a platform in America who are now starting to take my podcast and put it on there. And that then again grows my audience and my listenership. Um, so, so that's a, a brief overview of the technical stuff. If you want, you can contact me and I can help um, answer any other questions if there are any. Um, I think the, the, the other thing about distribution is that I wanted to say was that your best chance of getting out there is through your guests actually in the beginning, because especially if you get guests on who have a higher profile and a bigger audience than you do, if they share the podcast, you, you're going to 
get a much wider reach than if you're just sharing it yourself. So I always encourage my guests to share the podcast with their audience. And it's, it's the podcasts that have done the best are the ones that people have shared the, where people have a, a greater audience. Um, and that kind of wraps things up from my side. So uh, I'm hoping that there's loads of questions. <laughs> Maybe they aren't, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Lee, that was really amazing. Thank you. It's a whole new world for me to listen to. So honestly, your insights and clarity in sharing um, something that, that could really help us in business is, is, is really greatly appreciated. So thank you for that. And yeah. also how you've managed to create your a community around your purpose and through that, it's created a um, a healthy income stream. So, it's it's really an amazing. Um, thank you for sharing your journey and 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 those insights. We do have questions, um, so if I can just pop um, onto the chat box, and then maybe we can go through them one by one. Does that work? Yeah. Um, how regularly do you put out podcasts? What is your suggestion? So, so I put them out once a week. Um, I do find that every now and again, I have to take a break. I'm, I've got a busy week and so I miss a week or if I go on holiday, I, um, I don't, but it's once a week otherwise. And uh, I think once every two weeks would also be fine depending on what, uh, what amount of time you have available. Even when you start off, cause that seems, is that not quite daunting as a first timer? Uh... Or is that the, the, the norm? It is pretty much the norm. Um, the, the, when you launch, the advice is to have at least five podcasts already caught, recorded, produced, and uploaded. So, um. so uh, I always, I've started with some in the bank. And I've had a, a huge bank of recordings that I've drawn on. So um, I've only released 95, but I've probably got an extra 10 that I haven't released yet. So Okay. That helps to, to record ahead of time, not record and then release, to, to build up a bank. It, it really helps a lot. Awesome. Um, where do you do your recording and where do you put the other person you are interviewing so as to get a podcast with superior quality audio? So I suppose that's in-person interviewing. Yeah, so in person, I've interviewed in someone's kitchen, in their lounge, in someone's office. So, um, and obviously the, the quality of the audio does shift according to what that environment is like. But these mics that I've got are called directional mics. So it doesn't, uh, you, you, it doesn't record the, the, the noise from the space that you're in, it records, records the, the sound that's being projected towards the microphone. So you have to talk quite close like this. As soon as it's far away, the sound doesn't really go there. Um, so it, it doesn't pick up that much atmospheric sound. Um, so that helps a lot. And all, I always say to people, as long as it's a quiet environment, it's good enough. Um, and you can then tweak it when you edit. You can, you can denoise and deverb and take some of the background stuff out. Okay. Out of interest, who did you reach out to first? Friends, people that I knew, so people in my, in my network, um, people at my children's school, just people that I found inspiring in some way. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely started there and it made it easier as well, sitting and recording with people that I knew. Um, how do you get your podcast available when you search, for example, via the podcast app on your iPhone? So, so that's what I meant earlier about um, you, you need a host, um, Buzzsprout or Simplecast, and then you, you need to go on to the Apple Podcasts. There's an there's a Apple Podcast platform. Again, just search for it. Um, and you've got to submit your RSS feed to them and then it takes a couple of weeks and then it's on there forever. Um, and it's the same with all of the directories. There's a whole bunch of 
like Buzzsprout helps you with it. So Buzzsprout gives you a list of all the directories and it gives you links and says, okay, go and submit here. And then you've got to go, you fill in a form. This is who I am. This is what my podcast is about. Here's my RSS feed. You plug it in. And then a couple of weeks later, they say, great. Thank you very much. It's now on our platform and it stays like that forever. So okay. yeah, that's, that's how you get found. Thanks. Thank you. Um, do you need, do you think you need some minimum amount of exposure for people to want to talk on your podcast? Yes, you do. Um, it, it's a tricky one that, and it, it depends on your relationship with that person. If you have no relationship with them whatsoever and you've got no credibility, then you might struggle a bit more to get them to come on. Um, but I also find that people are are willing to help, are willing to contribute. You know, so I've had like someone like John Sinai. He's he's a very well known author, speaker in South Africa. I've had him on, and he just his attitude was that he's willing to kind of contribute to what I'm trying to create. And so, um, it's not always you don't always need it. As long as I think you're doing a good job and you're putting out something that's quality people are also happy to help. Okay. Um, other than meditation, what other preparation do you do before uh, doing a podcast? Uh, sometimes I do a preparatory call with the, the guest when they feel like they want to ask questions or find out a bit more about what we're going to talk about. Uh, so that often helps, particularly puts them at ease. Um, sometimes I send guest questions up front so that they know what we're going to talk about. Um, and then it's a, it's, it's a bit tricky because a lot of the people that I'm interviewing aren't famous, you know, they don't have books out that I can read or, but I do what research I can. I go look at their link. I look at their LinkedIn profiles and understand where they studied and where they're from and what work they've done and look at their websites. I, I do as much research that is available. Um, so that I go in, I also go in with a list of questions up front. So I know roughly what I'm going to ask the people. And sometimes it changes in the moment. Um, but as much upfront prep uh, as possible is a good thing. Um, and then just two last questions um, from my side. Um, what gave you the confidence to do this, having had no prior experience? Um, It's a, it's a good question because I, I, it, um, I think it might be a personality thing because I, I, I uh, as I said, I've always loved conversations. Um, I just, I just, uh, I just said, stuff it. I'm going to do it. Um, and, and I was nervous in the beginning and I was worried about what people were going to think and was I any good and, um, I still have those thoughts uh, every now and again. And um, yeah, I, I, th I think it's, it was just at the end of the day, one of those things where I, I said, like, e either I'm going to try and fail, but at least then I tried. Um, and, and that kind of was more of an overriding factor for me than um, am I good enough or can I do it? Uh, I just wanted to try and, and get it and do it. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. And Lee, um, you know, if we bring it into context of what we've all been living through over the last six months and the challenges mm. that the pandemic and the lockdown have caused for many of us in business, you know, have you seen a change in the landscape with podcasts? Has it been positive, negative? Um, any comments around that before we close? So... I think there's been a lot of noise. There's been a lot of, um, you know, there's so many webinars like this now. Everyone's doing webinars. Every Everyone who puts out an event are now doing online events. There's a plethora of information out there. There's a plethora of people speaking on topics. So I've actually seen my numbers go down because there's so much noise and I'm competing in a very uh, loud, noisy space. And I think there's been a, I know for myself, there's been a serious overwhelm of the amount of information coming at us over the last uh, five, six months. 
Um, but uh, yeah, I, I feel like it's starting to come back now as things are opening up and shifting. It's the the numbers are starting to come back up again. Um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. No, that's cool. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Thanks for your time. Thanks for sharing the story with us and all these golden nuggets around podcasts. And yeah, we look forward to everyone doing your thing in that space when the time is right. There was um, other, yeah, one other thing you. I wanted to share was that um, yeah. I, if anyone here wants to start a podcast, I'm open to giving half an hour of my time free of charge to if you want to ask any more questions or get advice or whatever that might be, have a conversation, I'm open to that. So, uh, yeah, maybe Lisa, if you can, when you send out the email, I'll, we can talk about what that looks like. Um, send out my details and um, I'm, I'm open to helping. That's amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much, Lee. I'll share your details with everyone when I email them tomorrow. And yeah, just everyone, thanks for joining us. It's wonderful that you were part of this. And we look forward to seeing you at the next one. All the best. And thanks, everybody. Keep, keep safe. All the best. Bye. Bye.